construction of the Nairobi Expressway is progressing at a breakneck speed. And according to government statistics, every day this road is being constructed at a rate of 120 meters. Now, this is raising questions about the quality and the standard of work that is being carried out in one of the most ambitious uh, infrastructure projects in the Greater Horn of Africa. Joining us to help us understand these plus more is Stephen Kogi. He's the Chief Engineer at Materials Testing and Research Division at the Ministry of Transport. Thank you very much for finding time, Engineer, to be with us and of course to help us understand more about uh, the construction of the expressway among many other projects that you are supposed to undertake. Uh, first of all, when you look at this project that was launched back in October of 2019, here we are, uh, according to some estimates, 35% uh, completed. What conclusions do you make? Uh, the conclusion I make here on behalf of uh, even the ministry, because when I'm here I talk for the ministry uh, on behalf, is that uh, we are so far uh, satisfied with the progress, but would have liked to see more progress in terms of the speed acceleration. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely, uh, you realize the time period is given to end the main structures by December and therefore when we look at the progress we are encouraging the, the contractor or the developer to improve on the speed of delivery. You are talking about speed and Kenyans are actually worried that uh, you know this project is moving at a faster rate than anybody else ever expected. Can it be done faster? What, we are, what is being demonstrated here is that you can actually achieve uh, a very fast construction rate and still at the same time be able to achieve the specification, the standards, and the quality and the performance of the structure you are, you are, you are undertaking. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it all depends on how you, you undertake the works. So maybe if I can uh, give an example, uh, this is a 27 kilometer stretch of road. Uh, this road it can take a very long time. For example, if you put one team, mm -hmm. that is the one which will start from kilometer zero, going all the way to kilometer 27. It can take half that time if you split it into two. It can take a quarter of that time if you split it into four. That means uh, you are splitting it into smaller sections, so the so-called chewable sections, so that you achieve your end results. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day is how you, you, you plan your work, how you mobilize your resources, how you, 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 have, you put in place all these issues about, about uh, sourcing of material, the expertise you have, yeah. the equipment that you are putting in, and, uh, and, and, and also all the time looking and testing mm -hmm. that you are able to produce the right quality of the product that you want. Uh, so, so it is possible to achieve even faster. As, as the saying says, uh, put more men. If you put more men, you definitely end up uh, with, a, with, with, with a quicker or a faster completion of, uh, of this project. Mm -hmm. As an engineer, um, and you have been in this industry for more than uh, uh, three decades now, uh, you've seen many projects you know, come and go. Have you ever, in your practice, seen a project of this magnitude, you know, being undertaken at the rate that this one is, is, is taking? Uh, projects have been undertaken at, at, at this, this, this speed, or components of projects have been undertaken at this speed. Uh, just recently, there was, a, there was a SGR, SGR uh, railway. It had as many uh, structures or even more than this, this uh, road and it was completed within that short period of time and so far it has performed uh, fairly well in terms of what was the expectation. Mm -hmm. So yes, there are projects which have been done and remember uh, when SGR came and people were asking how comes, why are you saying it can be done three, in three years and people are reminded that the old Uganda railway was done in a much shorter time. What did they do? They just put more people. 
they split the section into, into small sections. As long as you have done properly the preliminary, like the design, you have done proper design, you have, uh, you have done proper survey, setting, what you call setting, setting out and all that, just like in a building, so that you don't put a structure here and it doesn't mesh with everything else with the other teams are doing. So it has to be a fairly concise science in terms of coordination between the different teams you are putting in place. Mm -hmm. So yes, projects have been uh, undertaken uh, with this speed. Mm -hmm. D -d -does, does it have anything to do with the fact that uh, this project is privately funded and so the investors want to complete this project as fast as possible so that they can start recouping their investment? That obviously is certainly a factor, yes, uh, because obviously uh, the faster this developer or the financier is completing or finishing the project, the earlier he starts recouping his resources or his finances. So yes, that is a factor and that is why we even the contracting. Why do we go to contracting? We give someone to contract our house. It's because if we do it ourselves, we take too much time. If we give a contractor, he wants to finish as early as possible and then get back his, uh, his money. So yes, that is a factor. Uh, if he finishes much, much earlier, he'll start uh, recouping his uh, investment uh, much earlier. Mm -hmm. Yes, true. The, the, the contractor you know, is, on rec is, on, is on record saying that uh, you know, this project is progressing at a rate of uh, 60 meters on a daily basis. As a division whose work is to ensure that the, the, the quality standards are maintained as well as the safety standards, are you able to cope with this speed of construction? Yes, we are able to cope and the reason is simple. Uh, when, you are, when you have such a big uh, construction or project, you have to put things in place uh, so that there is delivery and there is check, there is monitoring at every stage. How do you do that? You have the supervision team, like these projects now. We have an independent uh, expert who is the supervisor. And he will be checking uh, this project as it starts from the beginning to the end. He has as many teams as the contractor is having uh, operations. The contractor himself, you are looking at what are the quality assurance and quality control systems he has put in place. For example, is he, is he checking every component or every aspect of the work as he pro progresses? Then you will want to see how he is checking and then uh, you will want to see test results. You will want to see, uh, to, to, to sample for example, just to check what he's giving you is, is really what is written on, on those papers. And that is something that is happening on a daily basis in these projects. So the consultancy team and the, the, the other team, the quality control team, they are as many as the teams are available here who are working. So yes, as long as you put uh, teams, structures in place, uh, quality control systems in place, you can be able to check uh, the system. So we don't have to be, as a department, uh, come here every day to try and do that. Mm -hmm. you, you, you basically look at the systems which is in place the same way in the production of uh, uh, cement you don't test all the cement being produced there but there are systems which are there in place mm -hmm. the contractor or the manufacturer has certain systems sampling of testing and then when it comes out you also do a sample and you test and then of course at the end of the day we will also come and as a division what we also do he do what is called a post-construction evaluation. Post-construction evaluation means we will come now from zero to the end and look at the various components and basically see whether they were done the way it's supposed to be done. And we have equipment, we have facilities. Uh, this concrete, uh, if, whatever number of years it stays, we can come here and tell you the kind of reinforcement that was used here by X-ray. Even 20, 10 years Even from now. Even 30 years, we can tell you X, through X-ray, mm -hmm. we can tell you the strength that is there. Of course, there will be now a residual strength because part of it will have been used. We will be able to tell you what kind of, uh, of, of, of depth and all that. We will be able to tell you whether this project achieved the objectives. So yes, there are various levels of testing 
there are various levels of monitoring the performance up to and including completion of the project, you come and sweep and see what you actually get is what you bargain for. In any case, please remember this, some of these structures, like this structure is designed to concrete you design for 100 years, for example. Yeah. So you want to see at the end of the project, are you expecting to get 100 years out of these this, 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 uh, this, uh, structures? Mm -hmm. The same with the roads underneath. You are saying you are designing for 20 years. So after completion, we will come and look and see whether we are actually going to get that 20 years, mm -hmm. given the traffic that we expect on this And you road. can do that with technology. We have the equipment here. We, we don't need to go anywhere to look for that uh, equipment, technology. Yeah. We have it in, in, the, in our division in the country, in yeah. the ministry, we have it. The, 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 you know, the China Roads and Bridge Corporation, you know, is using the prefabricated bridge technology, whereby, you know, you have the prefabricating as well as, uh, you know, uh, the, the assembling cast, cast of cast, place, you know, yes, yeah. being done on site mm -hmm. in a different place. Uh, and if you go, which is about, uh, about five kilometers or 10 kilometers from where we are, you definitely see a sprawling yard. Uh, do you have your officers there to ensure that, number one, the cement and the mixing being done at the site you know, meets your standard, as well as the steel that is being used uh, is uh, of the agreed standards? Uh, it's, it's a very good thing you have brought, because you asked me previously how you can accelerate the project. And uh, that is a classic case of how projects are accelerated. If today I cast uh, on, on a manufacturing yard, or pre-cast, all these structures, then you realize all I'll be doing is coming with a crane and then placing it. So what are the things that you are doing to, in, in that process? We are having what you would call a modular kind of, of, of structures building. So in other words, you are having elements which are similar. So you can actually have a manufactured uh, processing. And, and even the building sector we have, we are now going to that. So that these elements, it is so much easier for the contractor to, to, to fabricate in his yard because he has, he has automated a number of things and it is a production and then even the testing, it is much easier you can do that as opposed to coming here and trying to cast these things in place. Mm -hmm. So in that yard, luckily, most of what they are doing is in mainly the same yard. Like we have one in Langata, Langata Road, a lot of these gutters, what you call the beams, is actually done at the Langata Road yard. Yeah. They also, uh, they also have another yard uh, somewhere here in VET. So there are not as many, but work they are doing there is so much. Mm -hmm. So we, you come with a modular, you come with elements that are almost similar, you manufacture them before in the yard, you just come here and place them as you move. So here what will be most critical is now the, 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 the pile, which is basically the, the foundation. Yeah. Uh, and then coming up from the pyre, what you would call the pyre or the abutments, that is really the critical things here. But in terms of what is being pre-casted, there is a very robust kind of... Uh, but even this, what is being casted here, you realize the formwork they are using is almost the same formwork. So you can replicate. The testing is the same kind of testing. So you replicate. It becomes so much easier. In terms of capacity, as I said earlier, uh, I don't have to be there as a department uh, in all the sites because we have the supervision team. Uh, there is a consultant, what you're calling the independent uh, experts, they are a fully-fledged firm which has all these expertise within these projects. So they are not only on each road section, they are also where the manufacturing is being done. So what we do is more of the oversight. You come to see whether what, what is being done and what they are checking mm -hmm. is what we expect. And how they are checking it, is it what we expect? And then at the end of the day, uh, we also, in, when need be, 
we carry out sampling if need be. And uh, don't forget also, uh, as I said, you can come at, at any time and do what you call non-destructive testing. Those x-rays, you yeah. can come to see what strength of concrete it is. Mm -hmm. So I, I really don't have to, 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 to have presence in all those yards where the contract You know, there, there are, in many social media sites, I mean, there are questions also being raised as to, and people suggesting that uh, the, this project, the way it's being constructed, uh, is being constructed to last to the duration where the investor is expected to be, uh, uh, you know, operating this project, and after that, uh, the project will start crumbling. Is there any credence, you know, to such <laughs> theories? <laughs> you, 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 I, I, well, I can put it this way, that whoever is coming up with that thought is thinking business. And there's nothing wrong to think business, because every business person thinks of maximizing the returns. And maximizing returns is putting less, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, yes, that, that, that's a risk, for sure. But then, uh, that is why also this monitoring, the design, design review, because it starts much earlier, it starts from planning. Mm. And that's why he's able to do these things so fast. He did a lot of uh, ground investigations and all that much earlier. So you, there is a design, and then you do a design review. The design review is when you ask those tough questions. This concrete, for example, I can design concrete for 50 years. I can design one for 100 years. Yeah. So you want to see, is it what he's planning to do? Mm -hmm. And after he's done, is it what you're getting? And that is what you now the work of the independent expert is, and also by extension what we come later to do. When it comes to the road, what people now know as the road, apart from this structure, the design currently, uh, the optimal designs are about 20 years for this kind of traffic, unless you are doing concrete, yeah. in which case now you would do uh, at least 40 years design. So the sections that you are doing concrete, yeah. you would expect him to do a 40 year, at least a 40 year design. Mm -hmm. The section is not doing concrete, is doing the other, the other material we use, bituminous, mm. then uh, we would expect a design period of around 20. Doesn't mean it collapses after 20. Yeah. It means after that 20 years, now you are expected to come with a lot of rehabilitation works to strengthen it. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, remember, the person is here for 20 years, for 30, 30 years, yeah. 27 years, 30 years. So, and in terms of the agreement, there is a level of service he is expected to leave this project when he finally leaves. In that other words, after his, um, you know, the tenure of... Uh, of uh, the contract ends. Yes, the terminal, mm. what you would call the terminal. So we were telling him that we are expecting, when you are leaving, the road should have a terminal life for, for example, 10 years. Mm -hmm. So you would uh, expect him to come with the proposals, how does he strengthen the road so that by the time he's giving back to you, it has that residue. And remember, we can test it. Whatever he's proposing, that and time. he does, mm -hmm. at that time, you mm -hmm. can test. If you can test now, believe, believe me, you, even 30 years from now, you, years can, you can even test better. Now, you know, mm -hmm. according to, you know, contractual agreement between the government of Kenya and, uh, you know, the contractor, that is China Roads and Bridge Corporation, uh, this is supposed to be a BOT, build, uh, own, and then transfer, yes. uh, for a period of uh, 27 to 30 years. Yes. Uh, so what happens... Once the contractor or the operator leaves the site, this project or this road will last for how long? He won't just leave. The, the road agency will come and inspect together with the, the, the developer or the contractor, as you put it. Uh, and then we will look at what residual life did we say we expect that uh, road to have. If we are expecting the residual life to be 10 years, that is what is in the, in the agreement, then we will test at that time, or whoever will be there will test at that time, mm -hmm. to see that he's actually meeting that. Then the contractor comes with the proposal, because chances are it may not be uh, 
uh, residual life we may not be 20 years or whatever years. Uh, I'm not specific here. Then he'll come with the proposals, how do I increase that? He will come with, uh, with overlay, uh, he'll come some sections, they'll put some concrete. Mm -hmm. he'll, come, he'll come with a proposal. And then at that time, you will assess, you give a go-ahead to intervene, but the most important thing is checking after he has done it. Will you, are you going to get that? So yes, there is, um, the concern is valid that we should be able to get a road back, a road that will last uh, the duration of time after you finish. Mm -hmm. The concrete, even though his, uh, his, his project or this time, his time is 27 or 30 years, the concrete we expect 100 years design. That is what our standards... Uh, for 100 uh, years. 100 years. So, so it is, this project is expected to go for another 70, 70 plus years. He is expected after the, the contractor concrete. or the developer has left. It is expected that, mm. but of course with maintenance. There will be maintenance. There will be maintenance. Mm. There will be a bit of rehabilitation here and there. Mm -hmm. And of course if there is need for, for a bit of strengthening in some sections, you will do that. But in terms of concrete, we would expect 100 years. So we are saying concrete structures and bridges is 100. But remember, the other road section is not 100. And why are we saying that from the science or engineering perspective? Mm -hmm. It is very difficult to come and construct this. So you want it as many years as possible. As possible. Uh, in terms of bridge where there is rivers, you, there is something we call the return period of rain. You want to look at the maximum rain, you look at 100 years, what would be highest level you expect yeah. to achieve. Mm -hmm. So yes, that is, um, we expect quality at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, what, of course, uh, you know, with this kind of a project, you expect that, uh, you know, there will be a lot of uh, redesigning of the existing infrastructure. Uh, before this project, there was our Yaki Way, there was the Huru Highway, and there was Mombasa Road. Now uh, they have been reconfigured completely and they look absolutely different. Uh, are they also going to be constructed or the contractor is just going to leave them uh, in, 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 in the shambles that they are in now? Uh, certainly it will not be left uh, in the, in the shambles as you put it. Uh, the, there is the issue about reinstating, reinstating the road uh, to what the public would, uh, would expect. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, also remember, the government is also part of has, this project. Uh, I mean, not uh, not all components are part of this project. Mm -hmm. But uh, of course, I would uh, ask my colleagues in uh, implementers Kenha mm -hmm. to confirm the actual component. Mm -hmm. But uh, definitely, you expect uh, we will be having still uh, a travel using the road uh, down motorable there, section. motorable section. Mm -hmm. But also, there is what is being done as BRT. Uh, within that this corridor mm -hmm. so we expect also as that is being done that road section below is going to be the capacity is also going to be expanded and also uh, issues of uh, strengthening other 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 furniture and other facilities to be added on it mm -hmm. so yes it's a multi-prong uh, uh, and that I, I I wouldn't think it would be part of this project, mm -hmm. for sure, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, my colleagues in Kenha can confirm that. They can confirm that. They can confirm that. Uh, help us understand this. I mean, U.S. is just a department within the Ministry of Transport, uh, Housing and Urban Development. Uh, and so, because of that, you would imagine that uh, the personnel may not be so big to monitor all the projects that are currently ongoing in this country, from, you know, ship, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, port expansion to roads like these, to railway lines, to buildings. How do you ensure that, uh, as a department, you are well represented in all these projects? Uh, first of all, uh, our main focus is, uh, is infrastructure as infrastructure department in the ministry. So in other words, uh, the other departments outside infrastructure. 
So our main focus is infrastructure. But that does not mean we don't provide services to the other uh, department. We do provide uh, services, most of them on a call basis, yeah. to the other departments. Like, for example, you will see us in the airport, uh, the runways, for example, when they are rehabilitating, mm -hmm. uh, when they are designing for those runways and all that, we will see us there giving our inputs uh, and other in infrastructure development around there. Yeah. But uh, our mandate is mainly in, uh, in infrastructure. In, in infrastructure. Yeah. So what, what we focus on is, is a lot on our three roads authorities, what our three roads authorities, and is, trust me, is a lot of work yeah. they are doing. And also we, we create that capacity uh, that the county governments can also use our facilities to monitor and check the kind of work they are doing at, at, their, at, at their regions. Very well. You know, as we wind up, uh, you have regional, 16 regional centers, you know, in this country. Uh, there were plans sometimes back uh, to turn the division into a fully fledged parastatal. Uh, are, there, are there such plans now? And what do you plan to do going forward to ensure that uh, you have a footprint in all 47 counties? Currently we have a program of, uh, and supported, and we must thank World Bank for that, supported by World Bank, which also supported us in the other transformation, in this transformation uh, of this division. And we are targeting, we have a time frame, and we are saying by 2023, end of 2023, we should have transformed uh, the division to an agency, or what you would call a semi-autonomous agency. Yeah. We have the capacity, and that is a good thing about it, is that the division already has a very big capacity. Yeah. Uh, for example, we have more than 300 members of staff, yeah. and uh, more than 250 are technical staff. Engineers, we have 30 engineers, we have physicists, we have chemists, we have technologists, we have technicians. Yeah. So it's a very, very strong uh, human resource. Yes. We also have a very strong uh, e uh, equipment and the technical, uh, the technical backup, uh, state of the art. In fact, I must tell you that we even train our neighbors, like Southern Sudanese and all that. They come for, to us for training. Mm -hmm. so, so there is enough capacity. capacity. So enough, enough capacity is there. It's just now to tweak it mm -hmm. so that now the, the, other, the other advantages you get yeah from an efficient, uh, an efficient institution in terms of, 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 of the structure. Finally, uh, in 30 seconds, can you assure Kenyans and the world that the Nairobi Expressway is being constructed at the desired standards and it will last uh, to the desired uh, time frame? Uh, what, what I can assure the public is that the ministry and the and the the, the implementer, that is uh, Kenha, has put structures in place to ensure that we have we have a structure in terms of uh, the road from uh, the 27 kilometer expressway to the standards that it was designed for or conceptualized for the period that it was conceptualized. So we have put and the ministry has put in place all these structures, all these uh, systems, so that we are able to achieve that. Well, we have been talking to Chief Engineer at the Materials Testing and Research Centre, I mean Division, well, giving us assurance that uh, you know, the projects that are being undertaken in this country, they meet uh, the desired standards. You have been watching Inside Government. My name is O'Brien Kimani. Thank you for your time. We'll see you again on that the next time. Have a good time and all the best.